What is up everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video we're going to be talking about default arguments. You may also hear them known as default parameter values or default parameters. Whatever it might be, that's fine. But basically, it's a way to assign a default value to a parameter. Now this topic often comes up when the concept of overloading comes up because often people will use overloading when they should really be using default arguments. So we're going to be talking about the differences between them and when you should use which. But first, you know what you gotta do, you gotta check out our sponsor Embarcadero Rad Studio. They made this series possible so check them out. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Alright, so before we start talking about default arguments, let's take a look at one of these overloads here. So basically, we created this area function. One of them will take a length and a width, and the other one will take just the length. So in other words, it's just going to assume if you don't pass in the width, that the length is the same length as the width. <laughs> Lots of lengths and widths going on here, but basically this is the one to use for a square and this is the one to use for a rectangle. That's the difference. So we are essentially making this width optional. Now, another way to make parameters optional is to use default values. So in that situation, you can assign a value to width. It wouldn't quite work out in this example because we don't know what default value to use for width. Specifically, if you have a square, that width is always going to be assigned whatever that length is. So not exactly applicable here, but there are a lot of situations where you're going to create functions and you can assign a default value to a parameter. So let's go through an example where that might happen. Let's create a power function. So we can use this function to raise a number to a power. So let's create this to return a double and we'll call it pow. And here's what it's going to do. It's going to take a base and it's going to take a power. And we're just going to use integer powers here. And the algorithm to calculate a power is we're basically going to have a total. We'll start it at the value 1 so we can multiply by it and actually get a value. If we had 0, it wouldn't work. And then we'll go through a for loop. This for loop will start as 0 and it will count up until power. And each time we're going to increment i by 1. So if power was three, it's going to iterate through this loop three times. Now what are we going to do in the body of this loop? We're just going to increase total by multiplying it by the base. So in this situation, if base was three, you would have total equals base times base times base, which is a lot of base or 27. And then once we're finally done, we're just going to return that total. So I think this should be right, but let's just go through an example to make sure we get the right value. I'm going to comment out main just because we don't want to have all this stuff here, but I might use that stuff later, so I'm going to keep it for now. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to standard C out, and what are we going to output? We're going to output power, and let's just pass in the value 3 raised to the third power. Let's compile and run, and we, what? <sighs> uh, all right, so we got 10 bits because this needs to be a multiplication. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I swear I'm not stupid. All right, now you can see we get the value 27. Now, what if we wanted to create another version of power where we don't have to pass in the second argument? You know, what if we just wanted it to raise it to the second power by default, so square the number? Well, what we could do is we could go in here and create a second power function, basically do it like this. It will only have one parameter, which would be double base. And then the algorithm here would just assume that we're going to raise it to the second power, so it would be base times base, and it would return that. So in that situation, we could call the same thing here, and then instead of passing two arguments, we could just pass in one argument, and it would be three times three, or nine. Now when we compile, you can see we do in fact get nine. So that is how we use overloading to basically make the power optional, but a better solution to this problem would be a default argument. And the way that looks is you just put an equal sign after the parameter and give it a value, we'll default it to two. Now we can actually get rid of this overload because we're not going to need it. And now when we compile, you can see it still compiles 
and it still runs. That's pretty awesome. Basically how this works is if we don't pass in a second argument, it's going to default it to two. And fortunately our algorithm works exactly the same way. It only goes through this loop twice and the total ends up being correct. So that is how you use default arguments. So when should you use overloading and when should you use default arguments? Well, anytime you can put a default value in the arguments or the parameters like so, that is what you should do. You should minimize overloading because it's more complex. You will often have repeating code and it's not necessarily necessary. <laughs> so whenever you can design an algorithm to basically take a default value, that's great. And you don't have to go through the process of making it basically a copy that does exactly the same thing, but with just a specific number as one of the parameters. It's kind of redundant. You don't need to do that. So to conclude on that part, always do default arguments first. If you can't figure out how to do it with default arguments, then you can try overloading. For example, in our earlier functions area, I wasn't sure how to give width a default value in the case of a square because width would always be equal to length and you can't seem to do that here. See if I did width equals length and then basically width would be optional. You can see when I compile, we get an error. If that was possible, then all you would have to do is pass in the length and the length would also be assigned to width. So in this situation, I saw it as better to do function overloading and that worked in this situation. But you can see it is very code redundant. This is a very simple example, but it is possible to kind of overdo it and have repeating code. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, and it doesn't really apply in this situation, there are scenarios where you might want to call another overload from a particular overload of the same function. So for example, this area function could call this area function, as long as you're passing in the right arguments. That might be useful if a particular function provides most of the functionality, but maybe you just need to add or subtract something. And in that situation, you wouldn't have to repeat the entire code base. You would just have to repeat part of it and then call the appropriate functions. So hopefully that was nice and clear. This stuff can get pretty complicated. It can be a bit confusing. It's hard to know when to do what and how to keep it organized. But with practice, this will come. So stay at it, don't give up, and check out the next video. It's gonna be a lot of fun because as you can see, we're starting to build up this function library here where we have a bunch of these different functions and I wanna actually take these and export it into basically a function library in its own files and we can do multiple file compilation. It's gonna be really cool. It's the juicy stuff of C++, so be sure to check it out and thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video.